Hey, what's happening, YouTube? I hope you're having a fantastic day. Really appreciate everyone's uh, questions. I had a lot of fun with that last time. And uh, so today, we are going to be talking about... Well, it wouldn't happen to be piznidly plants, would it? Yes, it would. Uh, so, I've got a couple here. Um, I'm doing cryptocorns. I got these from an actual nursery. So, uh, for those of you who are still digging around at PetSmart and Petco, which is fine, um, I, I've just, I've planted everything from both those stores. So, you know, the closest nursery to me that sells aquatic plants, I stopped ordering them online because there's just no telling. Like, um, aquarium co-op, you can take anywhere from five to seven days. And I don't want to get too much into complaints, but it just, you know, you don't know what kind of condition in the complete dark they're going to be when they get to you. But um, I had a couple successful orders. But anyway, so I prefer going into a store and I can actually, like, see the roots myself. You know, like this. Just like this, I can already tell this is an explosively healthy cryptocorn. I mean, it's got roots coming out. It is ready to go. It's already gone through its transition phase. It's melting because crypts are known for melting all the way and then starting over. So uh, this is uh, green wintai. And uh, here, which I already opened, I've opened up a bunch of these already. This is um, a bronze crypt. Um, and that is a fishing line. So uh, we're going to talk about these for a second. Um, I have one that I hadn't opened yet. Now, uh, cryptocorns, the way that they duplicate is somewhat similar to runner plants like Valisinaria and Dwarf Changesword and uh, uh, Dwarf Sagittaria, but opposite. They throw their runners under the soil and then, surprise, pop up over there. And um, I'm going to open up one right now, and hopefully there will be one that's still connected so I can show you what I mean, and their their uh, base root is like super thick, so it's not, they do have some thin and flimsy ones, but not nearly as like um, Valisneria, so I'm opening up the sponge, and they'll be stuck to this uh, green um, sponge pretty good, you want to pull on it really slow, try not to, it. you do want to snip the roots, but you don't want to rip them. Because then you could rip the whole root off. So that's why I take my time getting the roots out, even though I know I'm going to be trimming them. I don't want to rip roots off. You know, I just want to trim the tips of them. And when you try to get, when you try to force them out of this uh, green, sorry, this green spongy stuff, I always forget what it's called, but it's like loaded with a bunch of nutrients and things that they need until they're sold. Um, but they get they get wedged in there really good, and I have torn roots away. Um, that didn't mean I killed the whole plant, but just don't get in the habit of treating your plant that way, you know. I mean, they're already going through a hard time. No, they can't verbally scream and say, hey, that hurts, but, I mean, I don't know. If somebody took my voice away and started pulling my toes off, I might want to scream. I'm not sure, but that's, all right, so this one is connected by what I said. Let's see if you can get a look. See how there's one root going to another one? And I can go ahead and snip these apart. This is a pre-propagating, because you want to spread your plants out. All right, so here we go. This is, this is one crypt, see? You know, and they, they come like this, just like any other plant where you see this whole top of bundles, but it's actually 90% uh, of the time a bunch of babies bundled together that you need to separate. Um, ooh, this one, the roots are in there really good. And it's okay to be delicate and take your time with this. I mean, I'm a person of patience. I want this stuff to last and take as long as possible. You know, that's why I don't do the CO2 thing. You know, if it takes my tank six months to a year to be fully grown in all the way, as opposed to doing it in a month with a bunch of injected CO2, I'd rather watch it slowly develop over a year, you know, and watch life thrive, watch fish breed and have babies. There's breeding happening in here. Endlers already having babies. Um, 
My Sarpe Tetras haven't started yet, but I haven't bred those before, and they're not live bears, so I need to look up what their eggs. Oh, I got a dead bummer. Cryptocorn leaf. Now remember, you don't want to leave any of this spongy stuff stuck to the roots. I've mentioned it before, but just in case you're new here, leaving that attached to the roots and then um, planting it will cause root rot. This stuff's loaded with a bunch of sugar and a bunch of other things. It just it, it it's fine when it's in these cups, but once you move it out and you stick it into some soil, you need to get all this all this crap off of there. Um, to the best of your ability. I mean, don't stress out if there's like a thread and you and you're like trying to get it and you can't and you're scared you're gonna tear a root. Don't stress out. You don't have to be that meticulous. Just you know, obvious clumps of the stuff. You know, get it off. All right. So this was actually. So this was one. You'll be able to tell because there'd be like a little loop up to the other one, like what I showed you before I separated those. And this one right here, you can see it's starting one right there. So that's the beginning of a runner. I'm not going to separate that yet, though, because it doesn't have any leaves or anything on it. So it's in the process of growing it. So uh, here's the green uh, wintai. And I got several of those out of there because there was a runner. I cut them in half. And whenever you're planting them, I'm going to turn this this way it kind of helps when you're doing these guys oh almost forgot my own rule snippity snip 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 at the tips snippy snippy tay snippy snippy tay all right so these guys their roots are are uh, much more firm and that is malleable as as like um other plants, uh, definitely not like Valisneria. So what I'll do is I'll, you'll find a bulk of the base. There'll be a thick part, and I'll press my thumb, my thumb up against it, and then the roots I'll wrap around the tip of my thumb and press straight down. And I'm going to try to give you a view of that because I have started a new tank. You know what? I'm going to have to take the phone with me. Oh, that's okay. Oh, hello. Alright, so you can see how my thumb is on here. Alright, I'm trying to angle this from the side. Alright, see, so I, now I'm pushing those roots in at an angle and then I use my other fingers to bring the dirt around see I'm still holding it with my thumb and I'm holding it with my fingers and it's okay it doesn't need to be in there super tight it can be slightly loose you're not gonna be putting any animals in there for a bit anyway so um, you know you wait at least a week or so and everything will be dug in by that point you know so um, and besides that you know I just have different kinds of uh, crypts here I love how wavy the leaves are but th these are the real dill they're not like the ones that you get in the uh, uh, agar these ones get get big the ones you get in the agar are dwarf size you know so these get really long wa wavy uh, leaves so I'm super uh, stoked for that and uh, thank you so much for watching. I hope you have a fantastic day. And if you're having a bad day, like always, get up and do something about it. If you came across this video, I want you to go to the nearest pet store right now. Buy yourself a 20-gallon tank. Bring it back. And start with my videos. Watch my videos and construct your aquascape as we go. I'll build it with you. Alright, thanks again. Have a good one, guys.